Hi there, I got a request to make a tutorial on one of Zelda's mechanics and it's the one that you can pick up the pot and carry it. So that's the mechanic that I'll be showing in this video. And as a bonus, I also added the ability of throwing that pot. So let's get started. The project that I'm going to be using in this video is made by Mr. Traff Crates and he has a tutorial series on how to make a game like Legend of Zelda. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out. Maybe you'll find something useful there. I'm using that project as a starting base for this tutorial. You don't have to download that project to understand what's going to be going on here. The script I'm going to be creating is the pickup script. Now what I'll be picking up is the pot. So let me find a pot right here. And this is just a sprite. So I'll set it to one and the pot is going to be a pickup item. Now the way that I'm going to configure that pot is that it's going to be on layer pickup. So if you can go ahead and create that layer if you want to follow along this step. And the components that I'm going to add here is a box collider 2D. Let's make sure that it's closer to that object. So something like that. And then we can also add a rigid body 2D. Now the script that I'm going to make is going to work with both a rigid body or just a box collider 2D. But if we add a rigid body, then we have the ability of pushing the object around. Now just quick settings for the rigid body. I don't want to use gravity scale, so I'll set it to zero. And I want to set linear drag to 20 so that the object would stop moving as soon as I stop pushing it. Also turn on freeze rotation. And that's the configuration that I'm going to have for the pot. Now let's go to our player. This is where I'm going to add the pickup script. So let's go at the bottom right here and add a new script. I'll call it pickup new script create and add. So here is my script. Also for my player, I want to add the place where I want to hold that item. I want to hold that item above my player's head and I'll create a empty game object. I'll name it hold spot and I'll move it up somewhere around here. Okay, let's go back to our player and start editing the script. So the first thing that I want to do is add the logic of being able to pick up that pot. And one of the things that we need is the location where we want to place the pot when we're holding it. We'll add a public transform hold spot variable. Then I want to filter the objects that are just in the layer mask pickup. So we'll add that public variable as well. And I need to add one more variable, but this one is going to be a little bit different than the other ones. Then the variable is going to be in the direction. So for my pickup logic, how I'm thinking of making it is I need to know which direction the player is facing. That, of course, we need to get from our player movement script and we'll connect that a little bit later. But how I have this variable set up is it uses getters and setters, so get and set. That variable won't be available in the inspector. As you can see that I can't see it here. Let's actually connect those uh, other variables, hold spot and the mask. I want to pick up mask. You can see that the direction variable is not available here. And it's because we have the get and set function available publicly, not the variable. So that's the public variables. And now let's add a private variable. The only private variable that I need is a type of a game object. And it's going to be the item that I'm holding. The idea is once I pick up the item, I want to store that game object inside this variable so I can access it when I need to drop it. That's the variables that we're going to need. And we don't need a start method. We're going to go directly into the update method. Now inside the update method, I need to check for a key input. So I'm just going to use input get key down and I'm going to use the key code E. Now when I click on the keyboard, the first thing that I need to check is if I'm holding an item. So if item holding in here, I would want to add the logic of dropping it. But let's first go into the else statement. And this is where I need to add the logic of picking up the item. Now the logic that I'm going to use for picking up an item is a physics 2D overlapping circle. And I'll be checking the transform position from our player's position plus the direction the character is facing. The direction is going to be a magnitude of one. So if you want to look farther away than one unit, you can go ahead and multiply it by a multiplier. 
or if you want to look closer you can multiply it by a fraction the next option is the radius and i'm using the radius of 0.4 you can change the setting to your liking and here is where i use the mask to get only the items that i can pick up now this overlapping circle method returns a collider 2d so i'll store it in picked up item so once I get that variable, I need to check if it's not null. So if there is an item that we can pick up, then I store the game object into the item holding. That's the private variable that we have here. Change the position of that item to the holding spot position. And also set the parent of that item to my player so that the item would follow with my player. One last thing that I have to do is check if we have a rigid body 2D on our item. If we do, we need to make sure that we set simulated to false, otherwise the object won't follow the player. So that's the pickup logic and we can actually save it and test it out. So here is my character, so I can push that pot around, but if I click E, you can see that it's not actually picking up and it's because I still don't have the direction configured. So for me to pick up the item, I actually have to get the character right inside the item to pick it up. But before I'm gonna go and configure the direction, let's add the ability of dropping the item. So right here, after we check if there's an item holding, we need to do the logic for dropping the item. So the first thing that I need to do when I want to drop the item is change the position of the item to the player position plus the direction. That way the item is going to be placed right in front of the player. After that, I need to remove that item from the player by setting the parent to null and also check for the rigid body. If the rigid body exists, I want to turn the simulated back to true. The very last thing is to clear the item holding game object because at this point we're no longer holding any object. So that's the drop-in logic. Let's save that and we can go and test that out. So let's go and try to pick up that pot. I have to go like somewhere underneath to pick it up. Right there. I picked it up. And now I can click E again and it's gonna drop. But you can see that it's dropping right on our player and it's because we still have not configured a direction. One thing that you might have noticed is when I'm holding the pot, the pot is actually behind the player and we can fix that by changing the sorting layer to player. And now when I pick up that item, the pot is right on top of the player. But we still have the problem of not having the direction. So to use direction, we actually need to go and modify the player movement script. So this might be different for what you're using, but you should be able to get the idea behind it. So first I'll need to have a reference to that pickup script that we just created. So I'll create a private pickup variable. Now you can make it public and connect it manually, but I'll just connect it and start programmatically. And so in start at the very bottom, let's find the pickup component and set it to pickup. And after we get that pickup component, we can access the direction and set it to a new vector, zero and negative one. Now, the reason why I'm using zero and negative one is because that's what the script is using here, zero and negative one for the direction of the animator. And that's the initial value that I'm gonna use for my direction as well. The other place where I'll need to change it is in here, once the player gets the input to move in another direction. So the way that this player movement script works is it uses the input get axis horizontal and get axis vertical and stores it in the change variable. So that works pretty good for me. I can actually use this change variable for my direction, but I'll have to make some tweaks to it. So first I'll need to check to make sure that the change square magnitude is greater than 0.5. I actually can decrease that value to something smaller. That might work better for controllers, but the idea is to check and make sure we don't store zero as our direction. If the square magnitude is greater than 0.1, then I can use the change vector and I want to normalize it so that the magnitude will always be one. Set that to my pickup direction and that is it. That's the logic behind setting the direction of the player. After we get that direction sorted out, let's click play and test it out. So you can see that I can pick up from the side, drop it in front of me, drop it on the side, 
the other side. So the direction logic is working like we expected. So like I said, as a bonus, let's get the ability of throwing that pot and destroying it. And for that, we're going to go back to our pickup logic and add another listener for an input. After we listen for the key code E, let's add another key code. This time I'm going to be listening for a key code Q. So Q button on the keyboard. If the Q key was pressed, then I'm going to check if I'm currently holding an item. If I am, then I'm going to start a coroutine and the coroutine is going to be my simple throw item animation that we're going to create and I pass in the item holding. So the game object that I'm holding currently. After I start the coroutine, I'm going to set the item holding to null because I threw the item. So I'm no longer holding that item. So now let's create another method throw item that's going to return a I enumerator, which we can use in the start coroutine. It's going to be accepting a game object item. The first thing I'm going to do is store the starting position. So the position where I'm holding that item right above the player's head in my case. And then I'm going to calculate the end point where I want that object to end up after I throw it. So I decided to just do it pretty simple. Transform position plus direction times two. So it's going to end up twice as far as a regular drop item. Then I'm going to disconnect that item from the parent by setting the parent to null. And in here I'm going to start the animation. So I'm just going to go for 25 frames by using a for loop. And I'm going to lerp the position from the start point to the end point by using I multiplied by 0.04. If someone is wondering where the 0.4 came from, it's uh, one divided by 25. After I do that simple animation of sorts, then I can check if the rigid body exists. If it does, I can turn on the simulate back to true. If you want the item to just stay on the ground, but you might also want to destroy the object if it gets thrown. So it's up to you to decide. So I'm going to do a quick implementation of destroying that object. So first I'm going to instantiate the destroy effect. And there's going to be a game object that we're going to pass in into our script. I'll instantiate that effect on our item transform position. The rotation is going to be quaternion identity. And after I instantiate the effect, I can destroy the item since we're no longer needed. The logic here is probably going to be very different in your case, but just for demonstrations, that's a quick way of doing it. Like I said, I need another public variable, the game object destroy effect. Let's add that. Click save. Go back to Unity and we'll need to connect that destroy effect. There is one effect that we have here and it is enemy destroy. So I'm just going to use that. Let's duplicate those spots so we have a little bit more to test with. So place them all over the scene and let's test it out. So we can pick it up, put it down, we can drop it and destroy it. If you want to get the pickup script that I showed how to create, I'll leave a link to GitHub in description so you can check that out. If you enjoyed the video, click on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.